Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to have you here with us in London for the Film Festival. If you could just kick us off with an introduction to your film and tell us a bit about what audiences can expect. My name is John Cesare Goff. I'm the um, director and one of the producers of the feature um, documentary After Sherman. It's sort of a hybrid experimental um, treatment of a community in the southeastern United States of descendants of formerly enslaved um, Africans known as um, Gullah Geechee people. It's the same um, community in which Julie Dash's film Daughters of the Dust takes place. And so in many ways, my film um, begins with an attempt to answer the question she poses at the end of her film, where the family is removing, um, is leaving these remote sea islands to find other opportunities in other parts of um, the United States. And so it's a similar journey that my family took. And, you know, nearly 100 years later from where that film was set, me and my contemporaries are sort of exploring the question of, how can this place be our home um, when it carries so much trauma? Tell us a bit about the journey to making this film. I mean, you're saying a little bit there about your inspiration, but you know, when did you first have the idea and, and how did you get it from the idea to the film that we see now? Oh, I always say that it took eight years, but it was really longer. I started photographing um, the community as a high school student in the in the late 1990s. Um, but for this film project, um, after my grandmother died in 2015, she was 98 years old, and I realized that there was um, a quality, a cultural specificity that was going to be leaving this earth forever. And so I really wanted to rush and document as many elders in the community who sort of still retained this language and tradition as possible. And so I started out making what was supposed to be a very lyrical, poetic experimental film, possibly even a short film. <laughs> but about a year into um, filming, um, the production was violently interrupted by a mass shooting at my family's church in Charleston, South Carolina, which left um, nine community members dead, um, including one of the advisors for my original project, who was the pastor of the church and a state senator, um, Reverend um, Clementa Pinckney. And so, I had to sort of balance my desire to fulfill my creative and artistic impulses to render the space how I see it and imagine it with some hard um, facts and realities um, and oral histories that were collected sort of in the aftermath of the shooting and connecting it to larger societal issues within the United States and, and, and abroad. Yeah, like, like it sounds like it was it was quite a journey to go on. And um, what were perhaps the most difficult moments in making the film? But what were also some of the highlights? The most difficult moments were trying to get my family to participate in the film. Um, my dad, who is slightly media trained, it was really hard to get him to become to be vulnerable on camera. Like everything felt like a prepackaged response. And then my mom, I just didn't feel. Like, it was right to, like, force her to, like, reflect on sort of, like, this tragedy that, like, she witnessed. And then my brother, <laughs> it took him six years to give me an on-camera interview. Um, and it was about 15 minutes, but he really provided a lot of gems and insights that, like, I don't think I would have had, like, regardless of the film, just for myself. And so that's both the difficulty and joy of making this film and also being able to have so many brilliant collaborators. You know, I'm a cinematographer by training or practice and um, early on in production, one of my producers, Blair Doris Walther, um, whom I was a cinematographer on her feature out in the night, called me and said, you can't be shooting this because it looks horrible. And I was like, well, I'm directing, I'm doing sound, I'm filming. And she was like, you, you have to give something up. I need you to be present as a director. And so I was able to bring in all of these brilliant cinematographers who I adore. Um, and then my editor, who I finally ended up finishing the film with, Blair McClendon, is also another brilliant um, editor, filmmaker. He, he, he edited The Assistant, um, um, Kitty Green's film. He edited Shirley. And so he primarily works in narrative, but he sort of 
took this leap with me. Um, and he himself is a brilliant um, experimental filmmaker and writer. He contributes to um, Filmmaker Magazine, The New Yorker, and, and Atlantic. And so it, it was really beyond what you see in the film. There was like a a deep scholarly collaboration taking place behind the scenes to sort of get to these formally challenging or conceptually, we'd like to think, radical approaches to, to telling the story. I think that can be quite important, especially now, even though I think there's more and more money in, in documentaries than perhaps there had been previously. But is there a bit of a tendency for them to kind of fit a little bit of a cookie cutter approach and have a certain narrative and, and form? And whereas actually, if we're going to create things that are new, we need to be experimenting with the documentary form. So is that important to you? Absolutely. I mean, the way we secured most of our funding was that our work sample mirrored that of a true crime um, genre film, opening with 911 calls and si police sirens and tears and, you know, and but I knew ultimately that's not the way I wanted to approach um, the subject matter or story. And I think, you know, eight years of making this film, the, the, the world of um, film funding and audiences acumen for documentary has increased. And I've had people tell me directly that they wouldn't see my film getting made if it were not for the success of um, Ramel Ross's Hell Counting this morning, this evening, which was an Oscar nominated, um, essentially experimental film. And so this really opened up American audiences to like, new forms of storytelling that I feel like I directly benefited from. And I'm like sit in a um, sort of conversation of young American artists and filmmakers that include the like of like Garrett Bradley, um, my producer and partner, Madeline Hunt Ehrlich, um, you know, and, and many, many others.